second to be able to cover someone. And, you're, and as soon as he gets to you, you're like, wait a minute, I thought you were on the other side of the pitch. I think he's going to be the key. If Lost Boys are able to pull away the victory, I think he will be one of the key pieces to a Lost Boys victory today. Right. And, uh, Diana, you've seen a lot more of Steve DeCaro. Like, Lost Boys, we've set our base in Los Angeles. You're in USC, same city. You've seen a lot of Steve DeCaro. Do you think that the game comes down to him doing a snitch grab? Uh, in a previous game from last night, uh, Maryland Lost Boys, he he was being flipped by the previous game's snitch, Alan Black. He was being flipped, and he got the, the grab mid-flip. Well, um, from that game, he actually developed bursitis in his left elbow. Um, so right now his elbow is swollen, but um, that hasn't seemed to stop him. He's a very smart seeker, um, not the most physically strong person. Um, but he's definitely one of the smartest seekers in the game. I think um, if it comes close, he will get the snitch grab, although I haven't seen Bowling Green's players. Okay, and now we're being joined by Kathleen Richter in the booth. Uh, Cody has his own duties as announcer to go to. He, we, he will be back later for the D2 championships, so you'll hear plenty of CC's Pizza references. Kathleen, uh, tell us a bit about uh, yourself real quick. We've broken down our Diana's from USC. Uh, well, I play beater on the screws, and I giggle a lot. That's why I have the name Giggle Fist. Can you talk about what the screws are? They are a community team from California. Okay, and like we've talked, we've explained what the community teams are. Uh, and there's a little friendly rivalry between the Scroots and the Lost Boys concerning your shirts. Uh, what's that all about? Well, back in the day, we so the, the Silicon Valley Scroots started before the Lost Boys, um, and we had our jerseys with they were black, and then the lettering was red. Um, and then the Lost Boys, they're we love them, but they for a while they had a shirt that looked exactly like our jersey, and they would play it at tournaments. And we played against each other wearing our matching shirts, and it was definitely very confusing for the refs and some of the players as well. Right. If anyone at home knows Kevin Olsey on uh, Facebook or Twitter, tweet to him that the Scroots jerseys are a knockoff of the Lost Boys. Because while it's not true, it'll infuriate him. And the ball, and the game has started. And the Bowling Green, Bowling, no, Lost Boys get a quick lead with the quaffle. And they're d Bowling Green, the, the, the Lost Boy Chaser is just plowing three, misses at the goal, recover, and they score. Lost Boys is in the game with a score. Diana, what did you see on that play? Well, first of all, Ross is always the first one to the ball in the Lost Boys. He's one of the fastest chasers they've got. Um, honestly, like their pass work, their teamwork, they're a very, very strong uh, team in general. So, it's, you know, like I said, it's going to be a huge game, a huge game for the Chasers. They've got to keep their passing up to par. And, you know, uh, it's, it seems Bowling Green is sticking to the strategy that's worked and that they've been having Dan Doherty sit on the sidelines, waiting for the other teams to get a little tired before unleashing him to just put up goal after goal. Now, Tony Rodriguez is in right now. He, it, he, we've heard that he's been injured. What do you think's going on with him today, Kathleen? Well, his hand is broken. His broom hand is broken, and he is throwing with his other hand that's not broken. But he's definitely he's been playing with a broken hand ever since Western Cup. Okay, so now we're seeing Bowling Green trying to answer what just happened with it. What just happened? Uh, we have we have Meredith Taylor from Bowling Green diving for the quaffle. We have a scrum for the quaffle, and Taylor's beat in the head. <laughs> Gently. Gently in the head, and we have a whistle. We're we're about to see what the whistle is for. Uh, not sure what the whistle is for, but it. Seems that there's no card, so no harm, no foul. And now we are, uh, just real quick, we are being invaded by Ant. That's scaring me. Uh, turn around, Rios with the long shot, recovered, blocked by Zach Hewitt. Katie Milligan's bring the ball downfield, but the Lost Boys have both bludgers, so it's going to. Uh, we see Tony Rodriguez. He's, he may be injured, but he's not showing it. He's getting all over that ball, Diana. Wait. We have a loud noise from the scoreboard behind us. We're not sure what that was. Uh, but right now we have turtle ball. We have a turtle ball right now. The Ross boy player was, uh, the Bowling Green player was beat. Uh, Ross has the ball. He's advancing down the field. The tough defense, and she shoots, and oh, Zach Hewitt with the amazing block. And now Bowling Green, they they kind of just toss up a long shot. It goes wide. Uh, Bowling Green looks like they need to kind of settle down. Kathleen, what do you think about that? 
Well, the Lost Boys have recovered bludger control, and so they've been going, the Bowling Green has been going towards the hoops with the same intensity that they would go if they were facing one bludger, but this is no longer the case, and they're going to have to play a much different game, probably bring their beaters forward a little bit uh, to get back bludger control. Uh, meanwhile, t that's not Tony, that's Steve passing it, but it's back in Bowling Green possession, and the keeper from Bowling Green is bringing it forward, but still, still in Bowling Green. Now Dan Doherty's entered the game. He took uh, a little bit of a fourth shot there, but we're going to see a bit more of an aggressive Bowling Green deep, uh, offense now. If you watch the past two games, whenever Dockery's come in, Bowling Green just goes on a roll. We're going to see if he can get through that tough defense. Rodriguez is kind of limping a bit, so maybe it's going to start showing. How long do you think he got Any indication. He's going to start off really strong. He's going to slow it down a lot as he gets all, like further on in the game. Um, but he's one of those people that, you know, anytime he misses a goal, he will take it very personally and make it his mission to make it back up for his team. Yeah, right now, he and Doherty have been being up on each other. It's two fantastic players just going at it. Now, uh, and now, Lost well, Boys still have budget control, uh, but there seems they're about to lose it. And, Doc, uh, no, the Bowling Green keeper goes in. He takes a long shot to no avail. But Bowling Green recovers the quaffle in the behind the keeper's zone. We have a whistle on the play, though. We're waiting what the call is. It was a two-arm tackle, it's the yellow card for the Lost Boys chaser. Amanda Turtles. Amanda Turtles. Amanda Turtles is one of the most ferocious girl chasers I've seen out in the West. She always finds her way behind the hoops, no matter what. Bowling Green with the long shot, but does not go in. A physically, very physically tough opponent. Right now, Rodriguez is bowling downfield. Uh, Doherty tried to wrap him up, but Rodriguez, he, you know, if he's injured, he's not showing it, as now the Lost Boys go up 20-0. So, Kathleen, tell me what you've been seeing so far right now. It looks like Lost Boys are going to strike on that early advantage. And they are. They have. They still have bludger control, um, but Bowling Green just s sniped the ball away from the chaser, but Steve DiCarlo is fighting for it, and he's got it back. So that could have been a turnaround, but now the Lost Boys are again going towards the hoops. Right. We've seen Dan Doherty be a bit more hesitant than he has in the past. Uh, maybe the adrenaline's not going with him as much. They've lost some, uh, we've lost our, uh, they've lost their crowd, so it's been interesting what's going on. So Steve DeCarlo with the ball, Doherty's d up on him, He's trying to weigh in what the heck's going to happen, but Steve DeCarlo passes to Tony Rodriguez, which is, this is a perfect time to mention the legend of Sony Dicrod, which is, which is, and Lost Boys goal. Lost Boys have gone up 30-0, so now it's a snitch range game, but Bowling Green is put, Needs to put points on the board quick, Diana. What do you think so far? Like I said earlier, Michael Mullman, Chris Cito, beater duo. It's completely unstoppable. They have to get budget control back in order to stay in this game. And as long as those two are in, it might be near impossible. And actually, Bowling Green just got back beater control. Now Doc, he's gone through, and he, oh, you know, he can nail that shot, but Rodriguez was able to just leap above. Katie Milligan, despite her height, was just trying to go at it with Rodriguez. Lost boy beater lost his budger, but... Fortunately, he has beater power to yeah, defeat it. Right now, Rodriguez is standing. Uh, Dan Hansen, captain, founder of Lost Boys, everything, is over here yelling attack to his team. He's playing at Seeker. It's a fun time to mention that they're both part of the Carnival of Dans of the IQA, which we, which the Dans, we all just call it that, in that we all just play together like that. And DiCarlo with the shot does not go. Doherty's got the ball. There's no beaters downfield. One chaser to beat. Doherty jukes. He goes in. Oh, Rodriguez with the big hit. And now, now Doherty shoots. He scores. Doherty's put Bowling Green on the board. It's now 30 to 10. Diana, what'd you think of that? Well, that was actually a really smart move by Bowling Green because Tony is known to block every single long shot that comes his way for the most part. So that was an incredibly smart move, and they're going to have to keep playing like that to bring back the score. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see Dan Sanity return to the building because Dan Doherty is one of the greatest dunkers in the entire IQA. Now, we've got the Silicon Valley Scoops rival shirt team just chanting Lost Boys over here. Kathleen, what's your team thinking right now? 
Um, basically, we do love the Lost Boys, even though our shirts are, you know, there's a little bit of questioning about the shirts. We do love them. Um, we hug them behind uh, street corners so that no one can Where see that we're hugging them. Um, but the rivalry is mostly for fun. Um, and wow, that was a great hit from Santiago. Uh, Santiago Gonzalez is actually switching the keeper for uh, Tony Rodriguez. And he's been yellow carded very quickly, um, probably a behind the back hit. Behind the back. It's a yellow card, one man in the box. It's actually not a behind back, it's a push. It was a push from the back, it's still a card. It was, um, Santiago's not a dirty player by any means, so it's just an intentional momentum. So, so now Milligan's got the ball. Uh, as you can see, despite her very small stature, she goes hard against giant people. Doggy's going in, he slip, flips to Elgin, and it doesn't, and wait, there's, wait, wait, there's, wait, uh, there was no call on that, wait, oh no, there was a goal, um, from our angle it went in very clearly, uh, we're going to see what's going on now, but now this score is, we're going to review this play right now, Doherty oops it, yeah, it goes right through the hoop, that's why Elgin did not go for it, the score is 30-20 in favor of the Lost Boys, now Bowling Green, I talked about their momentum, it sounds like they're getting it, the crowd's being in the chant, the BGSU chant, Kathleen, and we've got bludger battles going all over the, the oh, and now, wait, wait, there's a player down for Bowling Green, in that aforementioned budget battle, um, we're just trying to feel what's going on. It's it's turning into a physical game, uh, Diana. What do you think's going on here? I mean, that was bound to happen because these are two very, very good teams. They both have something to prove right now. Lost Boys trying to prove it for the West, trying to prove it for community teams, and BG to prove it for the underdogs. Right, and the Bowling Green beater, he did walk off under his own power. We're also seeing the Bowling Green defense is getting way more aggressive, getting those strips that they're good for. Sam Elgin, she's charging down the field. She curves, she swifts, she spins, and now uh, we're, she's, she's just getting, they just got her all around. The hoop had gone down, uh, there's no call on it. But now Elgin's running back. She, you know, that's the one thing you see in these Bowling Green chasers, Kathleen. They're fearless. You were seeing Katie Milligan, who's about a third of the size of Santiago over there just just going hard at him and she's actually currently bleeding because you know Santiago is a giant compared to her. Kathleen what do you think of the ferocity of the the chasers from Bowling Green? They're definitely very ferocious and it's 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 a good thing for them because uh, we've got a lot of people on the Lost Boys who are very good at blocking passes especially long shots. And we actually just saw a nice goal from Steve DiCarlo, and there's a now a whistle on the play. If we can pull up a replay, we'll tell you what's been going down. We're going to break down what's going on. Um, it's just that it went into the crowd, so there's no harm, no foul. Uh, it's It's been an intense game so far. The ball is Bowling Green's. They power through, and the dunk from Bowling Green. You know what? Lost Boys ranked uh, very highly in the country, and now they're seeming, but Bowling Green, they're ranked low. They've been underdogs this whole time today, and they're coming back, Kathleen. What do you think? Do you think momentum's beginning to swing their way? I mean, at this point, the score is 40 to 30. It's, I mean, there's underdog for both sides. Uh, it's it's really anyone's game at this point. Right, and Diana, as we're seeing now, you mentioned that beating game. The beating game's just going nuts right now. Sam Elgin's going hard after Tony Rodriguez, and he's just kind of shrugging her off. Oh, the nice bounce pass, I guess you would say. And goal, Tony Rodriguez with the long shot. It is now 40, or uh, actually I believe it's 50-30 in favor of the Lost Boys. However, we've seen Bowling Green do this where they just get momentum and just go crazy. Right now, Doherty's going down. He's only got Rodriguez in front of him. He shoots. He scores. It's good. 40-50, Lost Boys. And now, uh, you know, the, the, the last few shots that Doherty's made, it's been basically fast breaks with nobody in, in front of the hoops. And part of this has been in Lost Boys' attempt to get back bludger control. The beaters have been very far out. Uh, that's, that's going to hurt them if they keep letting that happen. Right, Diana, you said that 
the beater game would be Lost Boys Advantage, but right now they've not had control for a while, and they've been trying to come get it, and every time they move up, it seems Bowling Green gets the steal and then just runs downfield. They have Doherty, they have Hewitt, they've got a lot of these fast chasers. So now, Bowling Green, Dan Doherty, Sam Elgin, Katie Milligan, a lot of them are just unstoppable. Zach Hewitt, they're just unstoppable when there's no beater around them. So, oh, a big hit from Ross. And he's going down. Oh, doggy has got the ball. He's assessing the situation. He's one bludger. Passes to Sam Elgin. And she's not beat, but she kicks it back to Hewitt, who got who has the ball now. <laughs> Diana, you were talking about this beating game being the critical. Oh, Doggy with a spin move. Oh, he misses it right at the T-joint. Bowling Green. Bowling Green recovers and powers it through. It is now 50-50. Game is tied. Bowling Green's got the momentum going. Diana, you talked about the beating game being a critical factor, and Bowling Green's just hold, held on to those bludgers like for dear life. What's going on right now? Absolutely. I mean, I've never seen Bowling Green's beater game, but I have to say it's ferocious at this point for the Lost Boys need to be able to get back bludger control. They need to have Michael Mullen and Chris Cito in. Misty Gray, who is their girl beater currently, she's great, but Mullen and Cito are unstoppable together. They're both fast and furious. Right now, yeah, we got Tony Rodriguez back in the downfield. He shoots, he scores on the on the lob. He puts back Lost Boys up 60-50, but right now it's within snitch range. And even and as great as Steve DeCarlo is, we've seen amazing grabs by the Bowling Green Seeker. So now Doherty's walking the ball downfield. Like I said, he feels no bludgers. Zach Hewitt, he sizes him up, he sizes him up, passes back to Doherty. It's intercepted by the Lost Boys. We're beginning to see a very chaser-based game now, though, Kathleen, because of the fact that the beaters are ha in their own world almost when the when the Bowling Green is on offense. What do you think so far? I mean, the Lost Boys are definitely going to bring their beaters up. As you can see already, it's both Misty Gray and, yes, Misty Gray, and that is Michael Mullman, and they've got bludger control back. The... Lost Boys have retrieved, oh, but now they, they're not getting it back because the, the Bowling Green beaters have taken it back. But the quaffle is in, Daniel, and a tackle from the Michael Mullman. Hold on. We have a beater down. We have a beater down for Bowling Green. It was a clean tackle, but she is down. We're going to see what's going on right now. She, this, she's, crying. She's, she's not doing well. She's crying, but it's getting intense now. Fans of both teams are chanting. Milligan is tending to a player, but right now we're. This is quite a serious issue. Uh, players from BG are talking to the ref. From our angle, it looked like a clean hit. Right now, just play is stopped because of the of the injuries. There's actually an injury to Hewitt down at the other end of the field. So there are two Bowling Green players down. We're not sure what's going on right now. Okay, while the players had gone down, while the players had gone down, uh, Bowling Green actually scored a, the Bowling Green actually scored a goal. There's a card on 21 from Lost Boys because of a, a just a push or something. I couldn't exactly hear head referee Lawrence Lazuski, but right now, two Bowling Green players are down. The beater is, it looks rather serious. Uh, Zach Hewitt's being helped off pitch by his teammates. Right now we're concerned about the girl, the female beater from Bowling Green, but right now it's tied at 60. It looks like a concussion uh, being administered. Yeah, we're, uh, according to Kathleen, it looks like a concussion test is being administered. It's a little bit of concern here. Um, since there w was a score immediately after the yellow card, there's no, the, the Lost Boy Chaser will not come out. A Texas Seeker actually just ran in front of us. Hi, Texas Seeker. So, Kathleen, uh, we've seen Bowling Green come up against insurmountable odds today. Do you think that they'll get an adrenaline rush, or do you think that this will hurt them? Do you th or do you think that they'll do it for their team? Do you think they'll go crazy for their team? I'm not very familiar with Bowling Green's team, so I, I don't know the character of their team. But it could go either way. But they did just have two players walk off the field injured, and... That could that could be disheartening, or it could be a rally cry. And now it's tied at 60, and the snitch has returned. So now we're gonna see the intensity once the seeker for Lost Boys. I do not see around. 
Nor do I see the Seeker for Bowling Green, but once it gets in, we're going to see Bowling Green Seeker, who's been phenomenal today, and Steve DeCarlo go at it. Honestly, if the 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 Lost Boy Seeker has been beat. She was been beat. She run back into the hoop. Should have dismounted the room, but it was a little confusing. Uh, right now, the best strategy for Bowling Green would be they have to get that they have to get 30 points up on the board though, just to be safe from Steve DeCarlo. Steve's out there and he's getting close. Dan Dockey with the alley oop and it's good. They go up 70 to 60. Dockey's rallying the troops. He's telling them they need to get in, but Steve DeCarlo is going hard right now. We're seeing both seekers just go at it. Right now, right now, right now, if DeCarlo grabs that snitch, the Lost Boys will win. So we, so Bowling Green needs their their seeker to get in this game because DeCarlo is a phenomenal seeker. Rodriguez going downfield. He's breaking. He's breaking. He's he's you know just a scrum right there. And Dockey's going to retreat. Dockery has retrieved the ball. There's one. The, oh, Lost Boys have retrieved possession. He shoots. No good. The Bowling Green Seeker needs to get into this game and start playing defensively. He needs to go for that snitch. Not sure what he's doing. So right now, DeCarlo, if DeCarlo's alone with that snitch, it's only a matter of time before he grabs it. Rodriguez looks a bit hobbled, but you know, for someone that's injured, he looks way healthier than I would look. Now we're seeing the Bowling Green Seeker just go at it. But he's beat by Michael Mullen. Now DeCarlo's back looking at the Seeker. He's got his eye on him. Right now, DeCarlo's just pushing. He's trying to get in there. The Bowling Green Seeker needs to get in there. I don't. He's, it seems that he's just afraid of the beaters from Lost Boys. We have another player down, though. Another BG player is down. So right now, um, interesting to note that Bludger Control is back to the Lost Boys, and this could be a game changer. Um, Seems BG is losing a lot of players at this point uh, to injury. Um, no word yet on the beater from BG, how she's doing, but hopefully she will be fine. They're checking her out right now. I'd like to point out that was a good tackle by Michael Molman. Like I said, one of the best beaters in the West. The score is 60-70 in favor of BG right now. And now, Lost Boys are pumping up the crowd. The Snitch is pumping up the crowd. BG's phenomenal crowd is, a lot of them are probably at the Kansas game cheering on Kansas. Uh, the Bowling Green keeper left field under his own power. Right now, it's they're getting hurt. Dockery subbed in a keeper, something that that you don't see too often. Now, now the uh, Bowling, Green, Bowling Green, they have the ball. The Falcons are advancing now field. Right now, though, it's... DeCarlo's De not getting it. The beaters are controlling the Seeker game at the moment. Elgin's got the ball. She breaks. She, oh, she's trying to juke left and right. She lobs it up. She lobs it up. And the Bowling Green Chaser, he's in. He's getting deed up by Dan Hanson, but he loses it. DeCarlo De goes to the ground. This stitch is phenomenal with the pink hair. You know, we just saw Alan Black with his pink afro. Uh, not with his pink afro, with his pink socks and uh, midriff shirt. But right now... Both seekers are going so hard. I'm trying to avoid the beats. DeCarlo's coming around. And Dan Hansen pulls up a shot and gets lost. Steve DeCarlo's beat. The Bowling Green Seeker's trying to get in there. It's no avail. Now, Elgin with the ball. Elgin with the ball. She's advancing. She passes to Doherty, who sees an opening. He's charging in. Luke's left. Juke's right. Shoots. Scores. And good! Bowling Green's gone up 80 to 60. If they get another goal, they, then it becomes a snitch range tie. Lost Boys will not be able to win if, with a snitch grab if, BGS, if BGSU grabs another snitch. What do you think's going on right now, Diana? Well, right now we have Santiago Gonzalez in as keeper. Dan Hansen also in the game. Right now, Lost Boys are tired. They're putting in their subs. This, what needs to happen is you know, the Lost Boys have no bludger control now. The beaters are controlling the seeker game at this point. And right now, the Lost Boys just actually lost their own budget. Dan Dockery tips the ball to himself. There's no one around him. Over he stumbles and drops the ball. He picks it up, though. There's no budget, and he's lethal as it comes and without budgets. If he scores soon, then DeCarlo can't just grab the snitch to end it. Oh, but the Lost Boys recover the ball. DeCarlo's been going down. It's a tough snitch right now. And now, BG, BG Seeker going for it. Oh, he's very close. Elgin Dean up on sent on Gonzalez. Now Bowling Green is advancing downfield. Kind of a menacing look right now. Bowling Green's 
Uh, Lost Boys is popping a new seeker. Break it down, Diana. I am not sure who number 21 is, but oh, some rough play from the snitch there, grabbing behind the neck, throwing the seeker to the ground. Play is stopped on the field. Play has been stopped. It's a yellow card to BG from for behind the back. Ali Katong and the Lost Boys with the quaffle. Still, the seeker from BG is basically alone with the snitch at this point. Um, could could be decisive, but Ali doesn't seem hurt even though she was tagged from behind. She's still got the quaffle and she's ready to go for the go for the hoops. Game is now back in play, and Ali uh, passed off the hoops, but the seeker from BG is attacking the snitch, and the another a goal for for Lost Boys. Lost Boys, they needed that score because Lost Boys might have gotten a bit desperate there because if it got if it had gotten up to 30. They could not have just won the game. And now, BG's bringing in a new seeker, just like the Lost Boys did. And it's getting intense over here. The beaters are both on this game. Doherty is trying to get around everyone. And now, the Lost Boys have lost the ball. No goal on the long shot. BG, BG! Waiting for the call. It is no good. Uh, let's... If you want to view the play, BGSU with the snitch grab. Can they grab it again, though? If they do, BGSU Seeger just got beat. We're, we're getting the crowd on this. Dan Hansen's going crazy. The beaters are taking each other out. Steve's back in. If Steve can grab this, like I said, he's an elite Seeger. This could be a difference right here. Rodriguez is going down for the. Down the field, the Carlo gets beat. No goal for Rodriguez. But right now, these beaters for both teams are just all over the Seekers. De Carlo's left alone, though. This could be the moment that decides it if De Carlo gets left alone for too long. But goal, Lost Boys. We're now tied at 80. The beaters are all over each other and they're all over these Seekers, too. So the, the Bowling Green Seeker just gave a high five to the snitch. That was fantastic. De Carlo's coming around the back. No avail as he's beat. And we're just seeing all types of insanity. Seeker's getting beat. Hoop is a bit turned a bit. Play has been stopped. It's a yellow card to BG for behind the back. Now, this is going to come down to the snitch grab, Diana. It's getting heated out there. The Bowling Green Seeker, De Carlo, they're just both going at it. It looks like the beer from Bowling Green is just on De Carlo, not letting up, relentless. Michael Moman also trying to get the Seeker and the beater from the other team. It looks like the BG Seeker is open right now. You know, if, if, and not a catch, not a catch. And Lost Boys going down and dunk for the Lost Boys! 90-80! Now, right now, the car is all alone with the Seeker. This could be the deciding moment. The Boss Boy's beat is all over the Seeker. For the VG, he can't get in there. If his beaters don't come and help him out, then it might be all over. Meanwhile, down to keep his own for, uh, for Lost Boy's, Riguez. He, he does, these Seekers are getting beat left and right. Now, right now, he's trying to get around the ferocious pink hair of the, the snitch. All downfield, he's got a look of determination on his face. And now, passes real quick. Doggy's going to D up. D's up, brings him down, and strips the ball. Meanwhile, now, the new uh, new seeker for Lost Boys came in, was promptly beat. <laughs> the seeker from BG looks like he's hurting the bed. Kathleen, what'd you see there? Um, he was he he had a trouble getting up, and he, you know he's standing there. Just I mean he's been going after that fish for a while. And BG scores a goal to go to tie it back up at 90 apiece. This game could end at 120. We don't know how it's going to end. BG Seeger has been beat. That snitch has been set. That snitch just roared triumphantly, challenging both Seekers to come at him. Diana, the crowd. This is the first time it's not been for BGSU. What do you think's going on? Like, well, right now, at this game, it's, 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 it's messy, it's intense, they've got a lot going on, they're trying to focus on secret game. This is the closest game I've ever seen from teams like this. And right now, Santiago Gonzalez is walking the ball around midfield, and both Seekers are just trying to go at this. DeCarlo's left alone, though, with the Seeker. He's left alone. And right now, you gotta wonder what the... 
because right now Chad Brown of Bowling Green has been stuck on DiCarlo by glue. Right now Brown beats DiCarlo. Uh, Bowling Green. And one of these most physical games, Meredith Taylor wrapping up the Lost Boys Chaser. It's going crazy right now, guys. Uh, this is one of the closest games of the tournament so far. This will be one of the most, most emotional games. Whichever team gets this, gets this snitch grab. It's and Kathleen, what do you guys say? Well, I'd say even though the team that catches a snitch is going to win the game and charge out victorious, the team that doesn't catch a snitch has also been doing a tremendous job, and they should feel proud of themselves as well. And now there was just a long game. It's an intense game. Both seekers have uh, seekers have subbed out. DiCarlo's still in. Right now, the seeker's trying to call in reinforcements, as he, as he, and the seeker's beat. The snitch is just kind of looking at DiCarlo as if he's challenging him right now. But, oh! Oh, there's no beaters around him. There's no beaters around him. Oh, wait. And now the snitch is going. The snitch is trying to get away from the car so desperately right now. There's chaos on the field. Beaters going down. Chasers going down. The BG seeker going hard after the snitch. Docker, he's bringing the ball down the field, try, possibly trying to bring some composure back to this game. And DiCarlo's gone, he falls again, it's no grab. The BG has their budget again, they're trying to get it. And now Rodriguez has the ball, Milligan's about to D up on him. Rodriguez looks a bit, he looks a bit hobbled right now. What do you, what do you think he's looking like, Diana? Two again. Tony. Tony, well right now I'm actually currently very intrigued much with the secret game. Right now, as long as the Lost Boys, if they can try and run up the score. Dan Hansen scores on Doherty. The carnival of Dan's has gone crazy now. It's all tied at 100. Doggy's bringing down the ball downfield. Snitch is trying to pump up the crowd. These seekers have been going out, but the beater game has been way more than that. Right in the hands of From the Lost Boys on the seeker. There's currently no Lost Boys beater on the seeker. Oh, now, now they are. There's beaters from both teams all over. Rodriguez is going down, but the def it's 110, 100 in favor of the Lost Boys. Seekers go are both going at so hard right now. <laughs> DeCarlo has been subbed out, Dan Hansen subbing out, so what was the, the moral support of Dan Hansen? Right now though, the Seekers, the Seeker for uh, Lost Boys is all alone. If Bowling Green, Bowling Green is, Dan Sanity's back and it's, uh, the hype is real. It's 1-10 all. This is one of the most intense games of this tournament, Diana. What is going on? Well, right now, every single position, every single thing going on is so crucial at this point. If Eels, then they can get out of snitch range. But if not... Gonzalez, Gonzalez goes to block by Gonzalez is deep. Gonzalez went down. That was really three hoops that were just saying, come on, go score on me. Doherty came out of nowhere to make that block. It was very impressive. But now, and now Santiago's down. Um, he does not look good. Uh, now the Midwest is running their banner through. Uh, could have picked a better time when Gonzalez was not down. If that goes. Snitch is trying to pump up the crowd. Now there's just flags running all over. Which flag carrier can last the longest? Gonzalez is getting up of his own power. He's walking off. Flags, up. and this is why we love Quidditch, Diana. Honestly, right now, I don't even know what's going on. It is chaos. There are people from other teams running around everywhere trying to figure out. Looks like Santi's okay, but needs a sub. At this point, everyone's so tired. The state. We're going to see people charge the field. This is. Gonzalez is now actually on the ground on the sideline. Hopefully he's okay. This game has been 24 minutes long, which honestly is not that long a game, but it's, it's getting crazy in here. I mean, it's not that long of a game, uh, considering that there have been games going on but we've had so many, I mean, we've had a uh, high quantity of people injured in this game, plus the humidity and the heat of Florida is, is definitely a factor. And the seeker from Lost Boys is going after the snitch, um, protected by Chris Seto, the beater from the Lost Boys, and also by their other beater, who is stymieing the other beater's attack. Um, and now it's the BGSU seeker all against the snitch, but Chris Seto, the beater, gets him out, and he ha has... Green with the ball, going in on the hoop, and score! Bowling Green goes up, uh, ties up one, uh, 120 apiece. This is a, this game. No team has been getting the advantage. DiCarlo's coming back in for the Lost Boys. Oh, he goes to try to sneak, and no, no grab. 
right now, Seeger's getting beat every, all around. They're right in front of it. Kind of scares me every time someone comes right in front of the announcer's booth. Bowling Green, Seeger trying to dodge, but to no avail. And now Bowling Green in the paint for the Lost Boys. Oh, stripped by Hanson! He's trying to the momentum's on his side, and to no avail. Ball's in, oh, no, and the, the Quaffle's going over all the hoops, but oh, and it goes in! Bowling Green, Lost Boys chaser with the follow-through. It's, it's 130 to 120 Lost Boys, but the way it's been going, well, it's 141 Joy Lost Boys, but the way this game's been going, it's gonna get tied up soon. DeCarlo's all alone with the snitch. Game is intense right now. I'm not sure what's Goal for BGSU is now 130, 140 in favor of Lost Boys. Bowling Green's beaters are coming down to get DeCarlo got thrown by the snitch. Andy Hopkins beat snitch ref. And now the, there's no beaters around. No beaters around the snitch for Lost Boys. Trying to figure out what they're going to do. The seeker, he's he's trying to get him. He's backing him down. And he's off. Good way around the legs. Play has been stopped. On that last uh, attempt for the snitch grab by DiCarlo, it should be noted he definitely, he ha he touched the snitch. He not just, not just touching the snitch runner, but he got a little grasp of the actual snitch so it could have been a snitch grab but then he was thrown our standpoint looking at it right here right in front of us was very intense bg spinning downfield and goal tied at 140 apiece this is in at seeker stop at your play rodriguez is in at seeker for the lost boys they're trying this snitch is giving them a nightmare they're trying every strategy they can throw at him BG's trying as hard as they can. It's complete chaos right now, Kathleen. This is one, uh, this is one of the best games I've ever seen. What, what are you thinking right now this game? I mean, this is definitely the best game I've seen this tournament, and I've been at definitely by far the most intense game of th this tournament that ha has happened so far. The snitch with pink hair and number 66 on his back and a, a, a bird that looks like the, the snidget. He's got the snidget on his crest, which is basically the original bird from the Harry Potter series. Don't handicap. Don't, don't handicap. Please. Mm. I know there's rumors of handicapping the snitch coming through, and everyone is saying no, probably because we're having the most fun game of our lives right now. People from every team are p so people from every team are here now. There's chaos going on. We're gonna hear a loud cheer for whoever wins. The Lost Boys. A lot of teams from the West will be cheering for them. A lot of teams in the Midwest will be cheering for Bowling Green. The intensity of this game is off the charts right now. Teams are making some subs. Uh, we'll take advantage of the downtime. We're going to take this break to plug the trading cards again. If you haven't seen the trading cards made by the Utah Crimson Flies, you should go see them and go buy them because they're fantastic. The snitch, he's, he's swaying. His hair is actually coming out. He might be a brunette by the end of this game. <laughs> Kathleen, what is, what is going on? Uh, the Quidditch. Quidditch is what's going on. Quidditch at its finest. We don't call it the World Cup for nothing. And right now we have Michael Molman with the fist up going for the third bludger to protect the snitch. But he has been beaten. He passes it to Misty, however. And now she's going to watch over the seeker. And she misses. Um, and she's been beat. And now Tony Rodriguez going for the Both snitch seekers are on the snitch. Um, Tony has... Mil Katie Milligan. Katie Milligan is going run around the hoops in, in the bowling, in the, in the boss boys zone. Ball's up in the air. <laughs> Bowling Green Seeker's all alone with the snitch. He's trying so hard. Both Seekers are giving it their every all. Now Rodriguez, he's going in. Rodriguez is powerful and he's lanky. It's, it's ridiculous. They've been beat so much. Lost Boys with the ball in the keeper's zone. They lob it up and they shoot. Oh, it goes through to put the Lost Boys up 150 to 140. Uh, Rodriguez and the Bowling Green Seeker are looking at them like play. And there's a score. We have a score for Bowling Green tied up at 150. Rodriguez, oh, he, ha he almost had it on Rodriguez soon now. Oh, it was, it was actually the beater who had previously gone down with an injury. She came back in. Now she's valiantly defending the, the snitch. And now the oh uh, DeCarlo's back in. DeCarlo is back in. And you know, we talk about Tony Rodriguez and, and Steve DeCarlo, how they're 
I have a combo name of Stony Dicrod. Man, if one of Stony gets that glitch, it's gonna be crazy. We're gonna hear everything. Facebook will. The BGSU seeker, he went for the snitch, but accidentally grabbed the snitch shorts and pulled them down a little bit. He almost, but he's very close to the snitch, but got the shorts instead. It was very close. And now Steve DiCarlo on the snitch. He almost had it, but he let, he got beaten. Snitch and the Bowling Green seeker, which we have a new seeker in, shake hands. You know, we like that. We like that show of sportsmanship from our snitches. Oh, the Bowling they're right in front of us, and I'm kind of afraid that they'll come bowling into us. The snitch for Bowling Green's going so hard right now. Meanwhile, DeCarlo's sizing up the snitch. Oh, oh, the beater's off of him. The bounce coming around. <laughs> See, the beaters have controlled this game, Diana. But his Lost Boys go, if they go, Diana, what's going on? At this point, I have no idea. There's so many things going on. Oh, Bowling Green Seeker on those are tips. DeCarlo's beat. <laughs> You heard the roar of them downfield. There's a boo-boo from Michigan State trying to pump up Bowling Green. A block by the Bowling Green keeper. Play, and there's a whistle. Play has not been stopped. On him like little Doggerty jukes, he jumps in, and he powers it through for the dance stand, and he put him in dunk. What a tie at 160, everyone. This is possibly at, well, it's the most intense match we've ever seen in semi four. That's for sure. What are those ranking matches that you've seen, Kathleen? Uh, there was a pretty good game against uh, Tech. I forgot which other team. But right now, the BGSU seeker is on the snitch, unimpeded. He's got a beater. But there has been making the score 170, 160. Uh, the BGSU seeker is no longer on the snitch, but DiCarlo was just beat, and now the BGSU seeker is back. This game, he has controlled this game as Tony Rodriguez with the goal. Neither team is pulling too far ahead, though. It's going to come down that snitch grab. DiCarlo is advancing, so is the Bowling Green seeker. It's complete chaos right now. It's. It, I, you know what, and real quick, we have to tie it. Neither, neither team is getting the advantage. The Bowling Green Seeker, he's on. And then DiCarlo, DiCarlo's beat. You know, Chad Brown's out, but we got to talk about him and what he has done this game. He's neutralized the fantastic seeking game of the Lost Boys. He, he's caught, he's caught Bludger's shot right at his chest by the Lost Boys beaters. And now we have the quaffle down in the lo in this BG zone. But, Dan, what have you seen from in general? The whole Bowling Green beater game is somehow able to stave off any Lost Boys attempt snitch if they're literally not letting Doggerty him charges in, in and Doggerty dunks the ball through. <laughs> We're tied. We're tied at 180. Even got official stats being kept for this game by Martin Pine of the Scroots. If you know that, get getting close. DeCarlo's trying to. Oh, a Bowling Green. Oh, there's a new Bowling Green seeker. And Noah's going in. DeCarlo's. Lost Boys score 190. It's, one, it's 190 to 180. This game is chaos. DeCarlo's getting open looks. Oh, the, the Bowling Green beaters just keep catching any budgers that take a shot, but they miss it. This. And now, bo goal, Bowling Green. We're tied at 190, folks, and it's not because they're bad defenses. It's because it's because this game is insane. Neither team is pulling away, Kathleen. What? What are you seeing? How is the team going to win this if they – how is the team going to pull away if this snitch stays out for so much longer? Well, I think that they're just going to get tired, and they're going to slow down and make sloppy mistakes. Um, and that's what I think. But, I mean, you've seen the heart in these players – as the game goes on, they're going to get more tired. Tony Rodriguez from Lost Boys makes a goal, making it 200 to 190. Um, th this game is really intense. The BGSU Seeker on the snitch, being held off. He's kind of making a football dodge, and it, it didn't really work. But Bowling Green, number 55, going for the goal. A uh, little arm round the goal. The Bowling Green keeper who just scored. Wait, we have, we have game stop. Their play is down. I'm the Gray Missy Gray from the Lost Boys. We she's one of their top she beaters. was a top beater. We have people coming out though to check her, make sure she's okay. Uh, you know, it's actually going to transition to this, but the Bowling Green keeper who just scored yesterday had taken an elbow to the chest, and he. It is 200 to 200. We're at 200 all around, everyone. This game has gone crazy. 
Whatever team loses this game, it will be a heartbreaker. But they will know that they can be proud of this game because they fought and gave it their all. It's not Misty. Kathleen lied to me, everyone. It's Melissa from the Lost Boys. Wait. Melissa from the Lost Boys is going down. There's a Lost Boys chant going on. We can expect the BGSU fans in the crowd because everyone is here. I'm not, I'm not even sure there's another game going on. Everyone's here watching this game at World Cup. This is one of the most intense games we've ever seen. Doherty's trying to size up the up position. What is going on, everyone? Like, It's also the game so far that I think has had the most audience participation, probably because it has all the audience. It has everybody. We've got ch everyone doing the Midwest symbol, and then we've got oh, we've got BG doing the BGSU symbol, and we've got people doing the West Region symbol and holding up the Lost Boy flag. Um, and different different teams are weighing in on who they're voting for. We want we've got BGSU teams for over on the right, and so far Lost Boys on the left teams fans. Both teams pumping up their fans, and it's chaos right now. The beaters all around. There's a new new seeker in for uh, Lost Boys. She's gone hard at it. The snitch is keeping her at bay. Bowling Green's beater just comes up on her and hits her really quick. Oh my God, this is this is unreal, folks. This is if you're tuning in right now, you have the pleasure of watching one of the finest games ever played. Lost Boys shoot wide. It goes in. Uh, goes into the stands. Probably a whistle. And oh, intense beater action of oh, the Lost Boy Seekers all oh, along with the snitch. Bowling Green's move has been so good on getting on her. And the goal of the Lost Boys, they go up 210 to 200. 210 to 20. Play has been stopped. Not sure what the call is right now. Um, I mean, I was looking at that play and I couldn't even tell what was going on. Both beaters from each team were on the ground and looked like maybe a headlock by the feet. Doesn't look like it was intentional, but it could have been. Diana, what? Where does this rank in games that you've seen? This is probably not sure one of the most intense games I've ever seen. I would say number one. If this were the finals, I would not be disappointed. If this was the finals, and and now that we have footage of this. That actually, this is going to be archived. This is one of the greatest games of Quidditch I think any of us have ever seen. This is going to be the one that we, that the Quidditch community uses to spread, to show the intensity of the sport, to show the crowd participation. Because this game is what this sport is about. The snitch, though, this game belongs to the snitch. He, whoever loses this game, the snitch won it. Both teams lose it in regards to snitch. One a minute for Michael Moment of the Lost Boys which that could be the tipping point for Bowling Green. Without Moment in there, they can neutralize the other beater, and that will give them the shot to grab the snitch. We're hearing, we're hearing Let's Go Sunshine for the Bowling Green. We're hearing crazy chants all around. There's no crowd favoritism. The crowd loves both sides equally. Diana, what, what do you think of this crowd? The crowd is probably one of the best parts of the game of Quidditch. Everyone is so pumped. Everyone's behind their regions or their friends or their favorite teams or rooting for both, like some of us are. And Bowling Green for the snitch. If it's good, it's over. And it's good. Bowling Green wins 240 to 210. This was one of the greatest games of all time. We're going to try and get an interview with the Bowling Green Seeker after this because that was ridiculous. Lost Boys get all no shame. They they came to play today. They're one of the best communities in the IQA. Everything they did in this game was insane. This was one of the greatest, greatest games you'll ever see, Diana. What? And, and the snitch grab was so safe soon after the room's up. You know, both teams have so many reasons to celebrate at this point. They did phenomenal on both sides. I am incredibly excited and yeah. hope that this will bring more people Can't to Quidditch go. and Can't to realize that Can't this go. is an intense and we wonderful sport. Congratulations to both the Lost Boys and especially to Bowling Green State University. We're sending we're sending people to go get and now the Scroots, they're making a tunnel of love for the Lost Boys. Everyone is because the Lost Boys you know, my heart goes out of them. I love a lot of their team. I love a lot of Bowling Green. So I'm conflicted for this game. 
a lot of these players, everyone on this field gave their heart out, Diana. This is one of those games where you feel bad for whichever team doesn't win because they both gave their heart out. They both played clean. This is one of the greatest games we've ever seen. And Bowling Green is on their upset streak. They are the Cinderella story. They're going to the Final Four. What's going on? That's incredible. That's incredible. And, and the Lost Boys have really put community teams on the map. They are a force this to tunnel, be You know what? Bowling Green, or uh, Lost Boys, they're running through this tunnel made by all their fans. Bowling Green's running through a tunnel made by their fans. They're both having the time of their lives. Neither team can hang their head in shame. This is one of the best games we've ever seen. South Flag, West Flag, Midwest Flag, they're both flying everywhere. Bowling Green's running around. It's insane, Diana. We're trying to we're trying to get an interview with the Bowling Green Seeker. So if you just stick around for about a minute, we'll hopefully give you an update. Just there will be some dead noise. Well, not dead noise. You're gonna hear the crowd going crazy on the feed. But we will be right back. Don't leave the feed. We're trying to get the seeker. Now we have with us the Bowling Green Seeker. Can you please say your name and just then just go on what you thought of that game? Uh, my name's Sam Wrightblatt. What I thought of the game, intent. I mean, everyone put their hearts out in that game, and it was just, it was crazy. And, okay, you got the win for your team. That was one of the most evenly contested games. You won by the snitch grab. It was what every team was going to win the snitch. You were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steve DiCarlo, one of the most... Possibly the best seeker in the game, rather than like Porter Marsh of Northern Arizona. And so, and it, what? And just lost how does it feel to grab that snitch? If you look towards the camera. If you see them, make sure to give them an awesome. It's unbelievable. It's nothing else. It's it's surreal. It's it's an, it's an insane. <laughs> now, you guys have been on the warpath basically all day. You had that controversial game versus Miami, and then you had then you had Maryland. And now you're taking down the Lost Boys. You've taken down elite teams all around. No one really thought you guys had it in you today. And led by Dockley, led by Milligan. What is the what are the thoughts going through your guys' head? How is the adrenaline pumping? Oh, complete adrenaline. I don't even like I don't even remember the stitch grab. I just pulled and that was it. But that was the game. And uh, we kept uh, stubbing out our seekers left and right. We were getting tired, exhausted. I mean, going from the 31 seed, beating all these higher seeds, which everyone projected we would lose, it's incredible. And like we talked about in the broadcast, Chad Brown, phenomenal in this game. Uh, what do you think? Honestly, it almost seemed like he controlled the game with his beating on the Seekers. What do you think about Chad Brown? Like, the Lost Boys, as Diana broke down earlier, have one of the most elite ga beating games in the, in, the in the country. And it seemed that Bowling Green, you guys have a great be beating game, but it became perfect today. What do you think of Chad Brown and your, his fellow beaters? Oh, well, all our beaters are, in, are incredible. They're great players. They all put their hearts out into it. I mean, Chad Brown has beater lockdown the entire game. He just, again, full heart into the game. And finally, I got to ask you, the crowd. The crowd is for both sides. What do you think of this atmosphere? This is the World Cup. This is why we're here in Orlando. What do you think of this crowd? They're incredible. I mean, their their energy is just that's what lifts us. That's what keeps us going. All right, we feed off. Right. Back, we'll go see Bowling Green in the final four, everyone. So we're gonna cut off the live stream for now, and we'll see you in a little bit. What? Oh, wait. Actually, we're not cutting the live stream because we're interviewing the snitch. Like I said in the game, you won the game. They, no one won the game. You, you did. Well, Bowling Green, they came in second. Las Vegas came in third. You won the game, sir. Thank you so much. How did you stay on caught for so long? We've seen elite snitches all around. Alan Black got caught really quickly by Steve DiCarlo. And you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, Tony Rodriguez, all the Bowling Green seekers. How, what, what's going through your head right now? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's one of those moments where there's like a... One of the greatest moments of my life, I guess. That's yeah, I mean, this whole game's on footage, so you can just show it to your, you can show it to oh, your, oh wow, I didn't even think you of that. You can show it to your <laughs> grandkids and be like, look, I'm throwing people. <laughs> so, like I said, that was phenomenal stitching. Oh, what was going through your head? Because like I said, Steve DeCarlo, one of the most elite sneakers in the game, and you're holding them all back. You're holding two at a time. Yeah. Obviously the beaters are helping you a bit, but yeah. What did you just think of the seekers? They were they were fantastic. Like each one I had to play a little differently. Um, I mean the main thing is just positioning and technique. That's all I was thinking. Just where am I? Where are they? And then trying to find the best spot. And and that's what has made you a, a great snitch being here in the Elite Eight. Uh, we <laughs> did we did joke a bit that you were going to become a brunette by the end of the game because your your hair your the pink dye in your hair is yeah. lifting up. But 
Hopefully we'll see you around later in the day, and good game. And now we're going to cut the live feed. Uh, stay tuned later on. We'll be having Final Four action as well as this D2 championship. Okay.